WNST, Towson, Baltimore, and Baltimore Positive. We are uh, positively into springtime here. And, of course, our friends at the Maryland Lottery are bringing together the Maryland Crab Cake Tour. We're going to be on the 15th at Greenmount Station. That's Good Friday. We're going to make it a great Friday up in Carroll County. Uh, going to have a great crab cake. I know that. Chris is up there. Uh, also, on the 22nd, we are moving to White Marsh. New location for my pal Andy, GNA Coney Island Hot Dog, right on Philadelphia Road. Stop by for breakfast. It's GNA Coney Island Hot Dog and Crab Cake, at least for the day. Uh, he has this beautiful sign that says, With Love from Baltimore. We're going to be there on the 22nd. 27th, we're Conrad's in Perry Hall. I believe that was the old Perry Inn, but I'm going to have to ask the Conrad family about that. This guy is the director of the Maryland Lottery and gaming. Don't forget the gaming part of this because we got opening day. We got baseball. March Madness is over. John Martin comes back on our defending champion. John, I bet the, the Betty Boop scratch offs are so popular. I gave a bunch of them away over at Heavy Seas last week. We had a whole room full of winners. I gave a bunch of them out. And I said, anybody wins, let me know. And nobody let me know. And then I yelled, hey, how many of you won? Like eight people. I won five. I won two. I won 10. I'm like, yeah, let's self play. How you doing, man? I'm doing real well. Thank you. And it's good to hear. It's good to hear that we have people enjoying not only the live events, uh, getting a chance to come out and meet you, and uh, but also having some fun with, uh, with Betty Boop, uh, scratch off tickets in the Maryland lottery. It's good to hear. Well, I tell you what, you've uh, you got a lot going on. It's event season. I know I talked to Brian a couple of weeks ago. Um, I've been getting out, right? I, I haven't shaken hands with people yet. I, you know, sometimes I'm a little more mask in tight circumstances, but getting outside opening day is this week. People are going to want to start going out. We, we heard about Artscape last week in festivals. And then this week it's Harbor Place and maybe redoing you guys. When I think of the lottery out and about, now I think about the machines in various places, um, you know, in Royal Farms and Wise. When I walk out of the store, I see you. But the lottery was ubiquitous for every event, neighborhood, tents, meeting people, giveaways, all of that stuff. And that sort of went away for two years, right? Yeah, it did. And we're, we're just as thrilled and excited as, as you are to be back out and, and seeing our our players and seeing our, our, our fans out there in, in the state. And clearly from our perspective, we, we we're from Oakland to ocean city. I mean, wherever the event happens to, 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 to be, we'll, we'll be there. And, and we've got a couple of things coming up here in the next several weeks. And every once in a while I, I dust myself off and I come out too, which should not be an enticement for anyone. Uh, they're there to spin the wheel, not to see me. I, I know that. Um, but we'll have some things. We'll have some fun. Obviously, opening day uh, is is a, is a great uh, event every year. Well, you're playing uh, every this, night with that, right? I mean, you guys are involved with the Orioles, where there's winner potential winners every night. We hit some home runs. They move the fence back. They, they should give some allotment for that. <laughs> right, right. Um, yeah, we'll have some with fun your with contest, that. moving the fence back. <laughs> and we'll have some fun with our with our annual uh, home run riches uh, bases loaded uh, uh, event this year, where uh, we have uh, selected winners. We already said, go to our website at mdlottery.com. You'll see who the lucky fans are already for the April slate of games. And these lucky fans have won $500 just for being selected. And uh, they will win an additional $500 for every home run the O's hit. So we know ahead game. of time. Is that to have the, okay. I, 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 that's, I did not know that. I checked and you are not in that. Well, I'm ineligible. That's fine. You know, I mean, uh, right. not that that's I couldn't right. use 500 bucks because we could all use 500 bucks. But really, the fun begins when the play begins for a home run, right? Oh, absolutely. And, and we also have some fun commercials this year, too. So when you go to mdlottery.com, you'll actually see some of the, the commercials there, uh, preview them for the, for the upcoming season. But we do have a couple of folks from Dundalk already. Uh, Frederick, Gaithersburg, um, Salisbury, again, all over the state. People uh, love to be uh, attached to the O's and, and the Maryland Lottery. And, of course, they love the $500 as well. Well, yeah, John, I'll tell you this. You, I've already stole one thing from Oakland to Ocean City. You know, I'm doing 31 crab cakes in 31 days in August. Uh, in all those places, all those Gaithersburgs and all those places you're mentioning, I have crab cakes. And I, there's a rumor that I'm going to add breweries to this thing because we're going all wow. over the state. And I get a little thirsty and there's a lot of local business going on. And it's, you summer. know, crab cakes, crab cakes are great. And, and, and you go to the places that, that serve the best, but they can be, you know, a little, you know something to wash it down, you gotta wash it down. Wash you got to wash it down. Absolutely. I want to stick with baseball, have a good time with you because as we are taping this, it is April 6th. You may hear this on April 8th or 11th or whatever, but it is literally the 30th anniversary of the opening of Camden Yards and you're you got a little former 
tribe in you, now current guardian in you. Uh, and there is part of that Cleveland Oriole. I mean, whether it's Again. the Browns and Art Modell or whether Again. it was Robbie Alomar or whether it yep. was uh, Manny Alexander or any of those weird things that happened back in the 90s. Uh, to, excuse me, Tony Fernandez. I want to get the name right. Yes, thank um, you. It, thank you. The thank late, you. great Tony Fernandez. I don't want to forget yes. him or Kenny Lofton or Bayerga, or as they said in Cleveland, Bayerga. Uh, nice. So well done. 30 years ago, we, we do this thing with baseball. I where the years go? I, I just want to geese because you're my only guest today and just saying I remember every single thing about that day. I went to opening day with John Stebman. We walked in together. We walked around the ballpark together slowly watching people filter in the bunting Rick Sutcliffe on the stone Sorrento with the first home run like all of these things that um, 30 years. I'm just glad to live long enough. That's all I can say. Yeah. And you know what? I mean, you look back over 30 years, did any of us, any of us foresee the, the generational change in ballparks that that, that that would bring? I mean, to be the first and to have that type of, of incredible uh, engineering feat and, and fan-friendly park. And then, again, Cleveland was one of the ones you know, shortly thereafter. Uh, that that went along, and then and PNC stole lots and, and lots of things. You know, rolling and rolling. Jacobs Field looked like Camden Yards, just it was white on the outside instead of like like red and 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 steel and wrought iron. John Martin is here. He is the director of the Maryland Lottery. He is a Guardians fan. Has that rolled off the tongue yet? Baseball. It's baseball season. You got to get used to that. Yeah, for me it has. I mean, again, and I, I try to be objective on this. I mean, the the Guardians are probably a 500 team at at best. I think they're going to have some challenges. They are going totally towards a, a youth movement, which I applaud. They have a, a potential of a very strong rotation and a strong closer. So, you know, they're going to have some games where, um, yeah, you know, they're they, they may win two to one. You know, uh, you got to brush up on baseball if you're going to know this much about baseball, John. You know, if, yeah. really. Yeah. Yeah. So it should be fun. It should be because I have not circled the calendar yet for the Guardians O's dates. I don't know where they are, but someone will will let me know when and where they are. You know, this speaks to my childhood and my love of baseball. When I was a kid, when the schedule came out, I always wanted to know when the Milwaukee Brewers were coming to town because I love Sixto Lescano. I always wanted to know when the California Angels were coming to town back when they were in California, uh, not Anaheim or, you know, any of that stuff. Uh, right. Nolan Ryan or Frank Tadan. I, it was always about pitching for me. You know, even when the Royals would come through, I'd want to see split off pitch or, uh, you know, it, 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 even – Moose Haas with the, the, the Brewers, who was a local kid, right? Sure. Well, he was a Marylander, right? So I'm going, I'm going into the way back machine for all that. The only thing I looked at with the Orioles schedule was, A, when is opening day? Because the schedule got moved around with the lockout, right? And opening in Tampa this week, really, on the weekend, and then Monday, just to wake everybody up, Monday's opening day. Um, but... I wanted to know when Shohei Otani was coming because I didn't see him last year. It was in the middle of the Crab Cake Tour. I kind of had a chance. I had a chance to see him pitch at Yankee Stadium, and I didn't. Um, So I have never seen him play yet. I feel like it's one of those – Look, man, I saw Jordan and Kareem, and I, I, I've seen Gretzky and Montana. I mean, I, literally, I mean, and I really do check the boxes. I haven't seen Messi play soccer, and I'm a little disappointed about that. But I saw Beckham play. You know, I mean, like I'm, I'm collecting that. And this Otani thing, I'm not going to chase it forever. It's going to happen, I know. But they are in on the second weekend of July. And the Orioles are doing a ton of giveaways around that. They're doing their floppy hat. They're doing a couple of really prime promotions in that block. I think that's going to be, for me as a baseball fan, to see somebody do something in the way Jim Abbott was just so special, you know, that that's what I'm looking forward to on the Orioles schedule. You know, you talk about pitching matchups, and I I will leave you with this baseball story before we get on to other things. But I can remember, I have vivid memories of April 1973, probably before you were born. Oh, no, no, no. I went to baseball games in 73. Come on, I'm not that old. I mean, I'm Gaylord old. Perry, Mickey Lolich, 74,000 fans in Cleveland on opening day. And that, I believe, is still a Cleveland record. It may be up there in terms of baseball annals because nobody builds 74,000 seat baseball parks anymore. Um, two to one. They both pitched complete games. 
So talk about did going in the way back from machine. Detroit to the game because of, I mean, they had just the 72 Tigers were really good. I mean, you're, I mean, the Tigers were much better than the Indians right then, but 68 Indians, I mean, they're 67, uh, Tiant and like all of that. But um, that that's, I want to see a picture of that many people, 75,000 people in the state. Cause I, anytime I was there, it was like 4,200 back in the day, you know, and, and freezing like, and freezing. I mean, I, I never had the pleasure to go to Memorial stadium, but my, my impression is probably similar except for the, for the lake winds <laughs> coming in, in Cleveland, but you had these huge edifices and, you know, again, 74,000 people for a baseball game and nobody left again, two to one, two complete games, two pitchers of an era. Uh, great, great baseball. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to wait until we're together in the fall and the Browns, who still are called the Browns, are, are playing the Ravens. And I'll tell you the story about being at the John Elway drive game. John Martin is here. Oh, uh, he's the director yeah. of the Maryland Lottery and Gaming. I got my uh, my lottery mug right here off offset. So uh, I'm running low on Betty Boop tickets. We're going to be out and about. Tell me what's going on with uh, with scratch offs. And I know you had some clarification on multi-match. We've talked about it in the past. And listen, part of the gaming, and my wife even understands understand this when we give scratch offs out at heavy seas hey don't throw that ticket away you, you know what i mean there's a second chance so educating people about that even when you're out that they just leave the ticket sitting there like a washed up um a horse racing ticket that gets dropped i try to stop people but you're always educating people and that's part of why we get together about how the games work we do we do and, and you know, you mentioned multi-match let me just go back and get that because that is a a, a maryland game it is an in-state game it's it's a jackpot game but it is not like powerball and mega millions where everybody across the country plays this is just a game in maryland so the jackpot creeps up very slowly not in big steps like like the mega millions and powerball jackpots do but we're at 3.5 million dollars for an in-state lotto game that puts us fifth all time on the multi-match hit parade and, uh, you know, it, it increments a little bit each, each time, but people who are fans of the game, it is a unique play style. You pick your six numbers from one to 43. And after you pick them or the computer picks them for you, you get two additional lines of six numbers. So you have a total of 18 numbers in play. And obviously one to 43, some of these numbers in the second and third line are going to be duplicates or triplicates of numbers that you already have selected. But you have four chances to win. If you win on any of those six or those three lines of six numbers, um, you, you, you win one of those prizes. But then the fourth prize is all 18 numbers combined. So it's almost like playing bingo where you've got the whole card in play. Um, and, you know, prizes are uh, can be anywhere from, you know, a couple bucks up to thousands of dollars, depending on how many of these numbers you hit. And if you get six numbers across, you win the jackpot. And the jackpot today is $3.5 million. So two drawings a week, Monday and Thursday night. If you haven't checked it out before, a $2 ticket, uh, you may want to take a look at it because it's getting a little ripe. It's ripe on the vine, as we yeah, say. Yeah, my wife doesn't get interested till it's $200 million, And I'm thinking, you brought me $3.8 million next week. I'd be like, I can live with that. That, that, yeah. that, that could be a That's, little bit of a game changer. You know, that, that, that could set me to sail for a few weeks in Florida a year. <laughs> that's a lot of crab cakes right there at 3.8 or 3.5, whatever that's, that's a lot of crab cakes. So, but you're right on, on tickets, scratch off tickets, or even uh, multi-match tickets. Don't throw those non-winning tickets away. Um, enroll, be a, be a, a fan of our, my lottery rewards loyalty program, because those, those tickets have value and we have many second chance contests uh, throughout the season and right now we're 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 pleased to have let me just get it right up here um, we have a spring fling contest actually it's not so much second chance as a um, random winning ticket basis we have uh, our draw game tickets you know the pick games powerball mega millions kino racetracks the games that have a computer multi-match they have a computer generated ticket on a random basis you'll get a message on top that says hey congratulations you just won a fast play ticket and our four new fast play tickets, a $1, $2, $3, and $10 ticket, are all available for, uh, for, for players to win on a random basis. So that's kind of a, a, a thank you for, uh, for playing. Uh, but again, the, the Monopoly second chance is, is rolling along as well. So Monopoly players are entering their tickets. You may recall, we've talked about this in the past, each month we have a rolling jackpot in the first two months there was 65,000 62,000 we're at the midway point of this third month and we're at 34,000 and growing so we'll probably have another 60,000 plus 
opportunity for a second chance winner. So that's a pretty good, uh, pretty good game to get in on as well. So your, your non-winning Monopoly tickets can be entered and we'll select once a month, uh, typically around the third week of every month. But you can go to mdlottery.com to see all details about these promotions and many more as they come uh, available. John Martin joins us each and every week or most weeks around here as the uh, director of the Maryland Lottery updating us on all things, not just the games and the fun and the Orioles game and we'll have Raven scratch offs again in the fall. And all, but where we are at, you know, at this point with Swark, where we are with the first round of whew, got through the end of the football season. I know it's getting it open in 21, then a Super Bowl, then March Madness. Now we're into baseball season. And I think things will level out. You know, I, I, I haven't been to a casino lately even to think about NBA or, or NHL or things that happen at night with games because it does get exciting for hockey and, and basketball fans over the next eight weeks where there is sort of daily action that if I were in Vegas, I'd see plenty of people, you know, betting on those things. I always put my mind in that over the last 30 years as to what it's going to look like here in Maryland. And then uh, I'm sitting up at Greenmount Station where I've been going for 20 years. And there's going to be a situation in places like that. I know you mentioned Bingo World. We'll get through all of those. But when, what is that, that arc looking like for a rollout? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you, first of all, what, what a great championship game. I oh, mean, I, 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 I don't care which side you were on, who you're rooting for. I mean, just as a fan of competitive college basketball, what a final as a guy that saw Duke fans get their hearts broken on Saturday and Carolina fans get their hearts broken on Monday, all I can say is two words, rock chalk, rock chalk, you know? <laughs> <laughs> nice. Can't nice. beat them, let Kansas beat them, you know? <laughs> yeah, right, right. But, uh, and, and clearly, you know, we talk about the Super Bowl, we talk about March Madness, and that that brings out all betters, right? Now, you you know, the, the waters have receded a little bit and you're getting the baseball season, you're getting the NBA playoffs, hockey playoffs. Now you're getting the people who are, are true sports enthusiasts. And uh, as they're well aware, we still have the five locations open uh, of, of five casinos open for sports wagering on site. But we are slowly working our way through the, the next four. And I would anticipate uh, maybe by the middle of May, you know, middle part of May, we should see a couple others of, of the next four be ready to go. And then maybe the final two um, wrapped up by the middle of June. I mean, that's kind of the process. Well, you and know, then- I'm getting with Chris next week up in Greenmount <laughs> Station and just hearing not necessarily how the sausage is made, but this is difficult that, you know, for whether it's Bally's or MGM or these giant companies that have been doing this for 40 years, but for People in Hampstead or people locally or people on a river, but, you know, different places that want to do this, that have been involved in this, that have put lawyers, money, licenses, you know, fees, all of those things together. There now, now comes like how to do this. And it's not easy to do. It really isn't. It, it, it's not. And again, I mean, the, the, the structure around it is is the uh, uh, the law itself. I mean, you know, the confidence we, we, of the consumer. Right. Literally. Yeah. I mean, we're we're, we're handed the legislation that's been you know, came out of last year's General Assembly and signed by the governor in May of, of this year. And so we uh, or last year, I should say. And 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 that, that's our playbook. And and to the extent that that that, you know, we don't have a lot of wiggle room. I mean, we are. Uh, uh, expected to use the same fervor and, and, and intensity that we deliver on the casino gaming side. And for some of these people, as you suggested, um, who may not be as familiar with the restrictions and regulations and laws, it, it can be a little bit of, of an eye opener. Uh, but we can't compromise. We can't say, okay, you know what, you know, you're a small guy or you're in a, in a more rural area, uh, we'll, we'll loosen up. We can't do that. So when it comes to responsible gaming practices, when it comes to underage um, restrictions, when it comes to making sure surveillance is in place, the back office accounting systems are in place, and you know, all the regulations are checked, that's unwavering. I mean, there's there's no compromise on that. And, and that's the process we go through. And eventually it makes for a safer, a more responsible environment for all players within the state. It also gives them a chance to survive and do it the right way, right? Like, so that they're here five and 10 years from now doing it, doing it to your point, responsibly, legally, all of those things that uh, was the mandate. And I think the concern over the last 30 or 40 years about doing it is that if you're going to do it, it has to be on, as I said in the beginning, on the up and up, as my dad would say, right? Well, sure. And, and, you know, you go back to what we're, where we're coming from. I mean, the whole intent here with any state, not just Maryland, any state who proceeds on this path is you're really trying to get people away from the 
the black market, you know, the, 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 the corner bookie mentality. I mean, the, you know, the guys and dolls mentality of, of a bygone era um, and make it on again, the up and up, uh, you know, make it, make sure that there's a, uh, a framework in place to protect uh, consumers and to protect people um, who, who, who may be aren't as familiar with, uh, you know, some of the, some of the ramifications of, of sports wagering and, you know, to do that and do it right. Take some time and effort. No doubt about it. John Martin here. He is the uh, executive director of the Maryland Lottery and Gaming. We're doing some gaming. We're doing some lottery. We're doing some O's games. Anything else you got to throw in? Do we have any other uh, $50,000, dollars winners that we're just going to brush off here this week as though 100 grand we couldn't all use? You know what? We, we have some fun winners. Uh, and again, you, you can invite people to mdlottery.com to check out our winner stories. And there's always a chuckle in there for, for people who are casual, have a casual interest. I love the story we had recently of a guy uh, who won our pick five game by using his brother's license plate numbers. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I wonder if he gave him a little cut of that action. Well, you know, know, you're giving me the 43 numbers and the multiple, and I'm thinking 36 is all 36 is my lucky. That's my number, you know, so that's going to be in. And I'm thinking what number combinations would I use? And I, I, I guess when my wife plays games, she just hits a random, you know, we don't, we don't have any lucky numbers or anything, but it is kind of fun if you play that way. Oh, sure. Sure. You know, uh, uh, but yeah, there's stories uh, about things like that. Uh, you know, somebody who, who won uh, just this last week on one of our holiday tickets. Now you and I are, are long since, you know, forgotten about, you know, Christmas and, and, and New Year's, but you know, some players still gravitate towards games, especially if there are top prizes still available. And one lucky person won on our $30,000 peppermint payout game from the holidays but cashed it in uh, last week. So, you know, they're out there and people will look at mdlottery.com to find out what top prices are still available on their favorite games, and what promotions are available, and they'll play accordingly. And hopefully we, they're playing responsibly. Play Christmas, cash in at Easter. No problem with that. John Martin here. He's the executive director of the Maryland Lottery. I will see you soon. Hopefully we get you after one of these crab cake tours, Greenmount Station, GNA, uh, and we're doing a whole litany of things in May and into June uh, and, and locking that. But people are getting out. You guys are doing events. We're getting fresh air. We're getting springtime. Um, crab cakes and beer. It's perfect for me and the Maryland it's, Lottery. All right. It's right. good. It's it's good. It's good to be us. I'm going to look up that guardians thing and you know if you're not going to opening day next week maybe you and i'll get together for a ball game since you love baseball so much that would be fun that would be nice that would be very nice i look forward to that you got it there he goes john martin of the maryland lottery joining us here uh we are going to be out doing the maryland crab cake tour also presented by our friends at goodwill industries and at john baylog on this week talking about uh spring cleaning and we're still doing a little bit of that i told john i gave you a whole truckload of stuff at christmas I need you to bring it back. I got a truckload more here in the springtime. So big appreciation to all of our sponsors and all of our friends letting ourselves play. Uh, and also Hugh Sisson and Greg Vetter and Tom Gavin and Patrick Russell and Samantha from Cooper's who made the Heavy Seas uh, a brewing event. My wife took the day off and it was fantastic over there uh, in, uh, in beautiful Hailthorpe. I'm Nestor. We are WNST AM 1570 Towson, Baltimore. And we never stop talking. A little baseball, a little opening day, a little Maryland lottery and a whole lot of Baltimore positive.